What's good guys? So I have some really really good news. I just got this email from Flutterflow and looks like they're now officially supporting the swipeable action. You know like with Tinder and with other apps where you could swipe cards. So this is what they say, swipeable stack widget. Uh, they now support it, okay? So to add this to your project, search for swipeable stack in the layout elements. And this is big because I'm not aware of any other no-code builder that actually supports this uh, natively, out of the box. But there is one caveat. There is one thing you have to watch out for, and this is what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So, if you remember, not too long ago, I think it was like a week ago, maybe even less, we built out a Tinder app, okay? We did not use the swipeable functionality, Basically, we built out everything except the swipeable UI. And so instead of the swipeable UI, uh, we just have a bunch of buttons. So we have here reject and we have here match. And so if I run this app, this is how it runs. And so here is our app. And as you can see, we are getting some perspective matches. And we can simply choose to reject this person. We can match them. And as you can see, we don't have that nice, elegant, that swipe functionality that everybody loves and everybody wants to implement inside their apps. Fortunately, this is something that you can do now, all right? So if we go back to our app, uh, this is our page here. This is our main page that kind of does this. And what we have here is we have a basic stack that either displays the content or displays empty matches ma message. So this is a simple stack. Now, in order to convert this into the new functionality, the swipeable stack and all that, what you guys got to do is you got to come in here and you want to add this new uh, widget here, okay? And you can just search for swipeable stack, just type swipe. And if you click on it, you're going to get a message. We already have a stack and you can only have one stack. And so what we need to do is we need to add another stack. We need to do something so that we both we have both of these at the same time. So we're going to add another stack here. And now we have the swipeable stack. Okay, we have the swipeable stack. And then we have our old content. Now the next thing you guys want to do is you want to work on the stack here. Okay, so the way the stack works is that you're going to have elements here. So this is going to be your query here. But the actual cards are going to be the, the cards that you're going to add the children of this widget because it says here add cards here okay so there's no documentation for it or anything like that that's brand new but the way i got it to work is that you can click on here and you can add a card okay you can add a card and now these cards that you're gonna get from like a db call here uh these are gonna be the cards so let's say you have a query here and it returns 10 elements you're gonna have 10 swipeable cards that's kind of how it works and so Let's continue working on it. So we have this card now. And what we want to do is we want to get the old data. So we have an image. I can just drag that right here. I can just drag that inside the card right here. I can put my data here. Um, I have another row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all the rows here. Okay. So I have another row here. I'm going to drag it right here. Uh, let's say I have another row here. I'm going to drag it right here. I'm going to put it inside the card. I'm going to say add a column and I'm going to add one more right here. OK, I just want to get all the data here. This is very, very important. OK, and then we have a row as well inside that column. OK, and now the old stack that we had before, it's empty because we don't need it. So we can just delete it. And now we have the swipeable stack inside the stack and it doesn't need to be that way. Or we can just drag it out and drag it inside here. Okay, we can just replace it. And now that is kind of what you want. You want your swipeable stack, you want the card as a child, and then you want to have all the other data. And so typically we want to have the image above, let's right here. Now we have an image here, and then we want this row with the buttons. Uh, we want it to be underneath. Okay, so something like this. All right, so that is kind of what you want. You want the image, obviously, up on top. You want the display name, location, age. And then you want the buttons. Now, we're still going to have the buttons there because typically in these apps, you have the swipe functionality, but you also have the buttons as well. Obviously, the buttons are going to look differently. They're going to be circular. They're going to be maybe a checkbox or an X 
an X there, uh, that kind of uh, visual elements there. But we're going to just leave this because I want to show you how the swipeable stack works. Now, the way you do it is inside the swipeable stack, you're going to have your query. OK, so if you remember, we are querying uh, our elements. We're querying the user collection. So we're going to do users, but we have a couple of filters there. The first filter is that we're only looking for users where the gender of the user matches our uh, desired gender, meaning our, when I say our, this is the authenticated user, okay? So if I come in here, I'm gonna say, I want the gender to be equal to, uh, from variable, I want it to be the authenticated user desired gender, okay? And then there's another filter, and that filter is we only wanna see the users that we haven't matched or we haven't rejected. So the way you do it is you want the UID that is not in uh, this specific list and we combine the lists because uh, you, cannot do mul you cannot do multiple of these, more than like one of these not ins. So we essentially have a custom functions to combine the list. And guys, check out the previous video for all the details. It's a long video, it talks about all of this, we simply do combine list, we have our matches, we combine matches and the reject, so authenticated user matches, confirm, and then the same thing with rejected from variable and authenticated user rejected, okay, confirm. That is kind of what we have, this is no further changes, confirm, okay. So now we're gonna get the right users, we also wanna exclude the current user, the, the authenticated user, because we don't wanna match the authenticated user against themselves. So now this thing is getting a user's collection and that is why it has a lot of, um, it all has a lot of cards, okay? Now, the way the swipeable stack works is that it's a really nice functionality because if you go to the actions, okay, if you open the flow editor, you're gonna see a bunch of actions here, okay? We have on widget swipe, on left swipe, on right swipe, on up swipe, on down swipe. So I'm not exactly sure what this on widget swipe is because there's no documentation or anything, but the other ones are self-explanatory, okay? You kind of see how they work. And for this specific application that we're building, we're gonna be using on left swipe and on right swipe. So remember, we already have uh, the actions, right? So for reject, we can just take the actions that we have for reject and we can duplicate it for the left swipe and take the actions for the match and duplicate it for the right swipe. So all you have to do is come in here, come in here, open, and you can just take this, you can just go in here and you wanna copy action chain. That's gonna copy everything and that's kinda of, you know, what you have to do. Then you're gonna go back to our swipeable stack. You are gonna open this editor, you're gonna go on left swipe and you're gonna paste the action right here. Paste action and then we have, and now we have this, the corresponding reject action, okay? So this is our action here. And this is kind of what it does, except there's a small, small problem, okay? If you come in here, as you can see, we have all the cards loaded, right? The cards are correct, the cards are there. But the problem is when we open this action and we have this, you know, we have to do something with the card. So imagine somebody left swiped it, we need to do something with the card. And what I'm doing is I'm putting them into the rejected collection. We do not have access to that card here. It doesn't look like we have access. What we have access is the whole array of documents, but that's of no use to us. We need to have access of that specific card that we swiped. And unfortunately, we have the whole document, so I cannot get that UID of that card that we swipe left. We just don't have access to that specific card, okay? So here is where I'm getting an error, right? Because here I need to use the UID of that card that swipe left of that user document that we swipe left. And unfortunately, we have an access to a whole list, which is useless to us. And same thing uh, when we swipe right. So if I come in here, I open that up on right type actually right here, right? So if I come to this match and I come in here and I open that up and let's say I wanna copy, I have this really nice flow when, when, when we match users, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna copy this action chain, okay? And I'm gonna go back to the swipeable stack and I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna say on, we have left swipe, I'm gonna do on right swipe and I'm gonna paste my action. That's kind of what you should be able to do and it should work out of the box, except we don't have access to, the, uh, to that user, okay? So I'm trying to add that users to, to my matches list. 
on my authenticated user, but we do not have access to the document. This is a big problem because this swipeable stack needs to have access to the underlying card that was swiped left and right, but right now it doesn't have that, right? So we don't have access to it. We just have access to a whole list, which is pretty much of no use to us. That's just, you know, we can get the number of items in that list, but that is of no use to us. There is a small workaround that you guys can do. It's a very, very simple workaround. And the way that you can do it is you can go to swipeable uh, stack here. And instead of loading it with list of users, you can load it, load it up with a single document, okay? And basically what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be getting one document at a time instead of a stack of cards. So if I hit confirm, I'm getting a document. And now if I go to my actions, and let's say I want to do left swipe, I have access to, to that document because it's only one document. So now I can click on this and I have the user's document. And this is what it needs to do. It needs to have access to that underlying card that we swipe, even if you have a list. So I can come in here and I can say UID and now everything is fine. Okay, I can come in here and I can do the same thing with the other one, with the right swipe. Uh, this thing needs the access to the UID and so I can come in here, users UID. And now it doesn't complain. This thing needs to check the other side, right? It needs to check if that user matched us. And now we can do it again, which we couldn't do before. So the way you can do it is you can come to the users. Uh, you can go to their um, matches, say list contains item, authenticated user, which is us as the user who is logged in, um, user ID. Confirm, and now it's happy. And I think we have more errors, right? So it's gonna say we have more errors that we need to fix. Uh, oh yeah, so we need to do the image path and all that, which we couldn't do before. Now the image path and all that we could do before. So that's not a problem. We can display the card. The problem is we do not have access to the card that was swiped left and right inside the stack. Okay, so now let's set up the, the, um, the images correctly. This is the photo URL. This is the... Um, this is our display name. This is the location, I believe. Location. This is our age. Age. And that's it. What else do we need? Okay, so now we have a couple of other errors that we need to fix. This thing here does did not have the proper access, so we're going to fix that right now. So we need a... This is a list. What is this? Uh, the first user reference reference of the UID, and this is, we have that set. This is gonna be no further changes, confirm. And we have a couple of other errors that we can fix. So this is user A. User A is the user that we're seeing. Uh, we have the reference again, and user B is already set. What else do we have? Rejected, same thing. This is gonna be add to set, adding the user ID. Looks good, and matches, same thing. Where we wanna add the matches, user ID, all right. And users, okay, let's double check. This is the first reference, and this is going to be the other user, which is right here, okay. No for the changes, confirm. What else is complaining about? User A is the other user. We need to set them correctly reference here and what else does it want and now we want a user document matches um list contains item authenticated user user id confirm no errors so now hopefully things are correct we're not having any errors except like i explained we're doing one item at a time which isn't ideal but it should work so let's run this app and let's see if it works. Let's create a new test session. All right, so here's the app. And as you can see, we're only seeing one card, but it is swipeable, okay? So we can swipe left, and now it's gonna go ahead and find the new user there. And let me show you, let me prove to you that it's working. If we go back to our database, um, this is my account here, right? James at james.com, this is the account I'm using. If I come in here, you can see that this is my account right here. And the way this works is that I can, I have my matches, I match one person, but I rejected two. So let me go ahead and match somebody else. 
just to show you that it works. So I'm going to match this person right here. I match him. And I and she matched me. So there's congratulations. You have a new match. It looked like she matched me before. So I'm still seeing that workflow, okay? So now if I go to the database, I am I match two people and I reject it too. So let me reject this one. And at this point, there's no more to load and you can change this behavior as well. And if I go in here, I reject the three and match two. And what we can do is we can delete all my matches. Let's delete all my matches. And that way it's going to start showing new people again. We can come back here. We can reload this environment here. And now I have matches. So let's say I match this person. I match this. I match this. I should have three matches. If I come in here, I have three matches. So as you can see, this is working. And it's a really, it's a really nice functionality because it's not only about the swipeable stack, but it's also about something called a callback, meaning like when you do something, we got to hook up to that event, right? So if you open this up, we have all of these callbacks. These are called callbacks, okay? I still do not know what this is, but these are callbacks. Unfortunately, if you have a list of, of children, it's not this uh, swipeable stack is not getting back that card. And so there is a workaround. You can start using it if you want. Uh, you can start implementing inside your apps. And we're going to wait and see how Flutterflow actually implements this functionality. And we will see if they're going to implement uh, us knowing what the actual card was, what the actual child element was, you know, the element that's below the swipeable stack that will swipe the left and right. We will wait and see. But for now, you have a nice workaround if you want to use inside of your apps, you want to finally implement this uh, swipeable functionality, you have this workaround. And remember, as always, if you want to view and or clone the specific app, you don't want to mess around with it, you just want to take it how it is, and you want to start building on top of it, you want to see how I did it, you can do exactly that from my Patreon page. And you can do the same thing with pretty much all the previous apps that I've built, they're all on Patreon. You can simply view and clone them. And also we are gonna have a big live stream having to do with Flutterflow, lots and lots of uh, value. We're gonna have a Q&A after it. This is gonna be on September 1st. So coming up very, very soon, it's going to be exclusively to our very special and very valued Patreon subscribers. So if you are a subscriber, thank you so much. You guys are highly, highly appreciated and you guys help out more than you will ever know. So thank you so much. And if you wanna become a Patreon, that would be greatly appreciated. So that is all that I wanted to show you guys in today's video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns and I will see you guys in a future video.